Good morning. Is there another countdown? Okay. <laughs> We're used to the fast one. Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice in it. I'm going to teach you a new song. You can just join us in the chorus. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad. Let's try it again. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice, we'll rejoice. One more time. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, put our hands together. There's a light that shines with hope and grace fills the sky with mercy new each day we're alive let your glory pour out Jesus there's a joy that overwhelms our souls cause we know our God is in control overflow let your favor pour out Jesus This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. There's a joy that overwhelms our soul cause we know Our God is in control, overflow. Let your favor pour out, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, hear the chorus. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. We're gonna leave all our cares behind. Leave behind what happened yesterday. Cause today a new thing's happening. Leave behind what happened yesterday. Cause today there's a new thing happening. Everybody, leave behind. What happened yesterday? There's a day, new thing happening. Leave behind what happened yesterday. Won't you leave behind your yesterday? Cause today there's a new thing happening. Leave behind what happened yesterday. Cause today there's a new thing happening. The day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. We'll rejoice, we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, whether you started your day with a Ha! Let's go! Or you started your day with a Ouch! But whether it's a Ha! Or it's a Ouch! Let us praise the Lord. Yeah? 
Whether this year started well or not, let us praise the Lord. Ready, guys? One, two, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hey, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
are on the throne. You are reigning on the throne. Hallelujah. Brothers. Giving glory, giving honor, 
Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning that we can come to worship in this house. Let's remain standing and let's pray together. But before that, let me read this scripture verse to you. In the Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessing that you have given us. We recognize all that we possess today are actually come from you. You are the owner of everything. Today, we want to come before you with a grateful heart to give our offering and tithes cheerfully and generously. Please continue to refresh all of us with continuous protection, guidance, and abundance of blessings. Heavenly Father, we would like to commit our young people in this church, be it from English, Chinese, or Tamil congregation, may your fresh anointing will flow into each one of them. Let their hearts be immersed with a stronger love to you. Pray that they will have the desire to walk closely with you and to continue to build an intimate relationship. Fill them with your words to strengthen their faith and their foundation. Please help these young people to catch the great vision that you have for them. We pray that each one of them will be filled with fire and great desire to catch the vision and build the church together. Lord, I want to pray that all the young people in this Pray City Church will have a good understanding and unity among themselves to move forward together. May God, you show them guidance how to leverage and build on one another's strength and one another capability to further build this church. And we shall see Pray City Church to multiply tremendously in time to come. And we shall see Pray City Church move into a new territories and chart a larger ministry for you. We pray that all the young people will come together and rise up Amen. to work together Amen. and build this church yes. together. We pray yes. all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 For those who are uh, with us online, you may also pay your tithes and offering uh, to the Touch and Go and the bank. Yeah. Good morning. What a wonderful time we have spent worshiping the Lord just now. We are glad to be here in the house of God together with the people of the Lord, right, making a joyful noise unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Good to see all of you here and also for earners who have just touched down back from Australia. Welcome you back, right? Come on, give me a big hand. Right. Chinese New Year time, you know, around the time a lot of Australians come back to Malaysia, especially our church members. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Amen. Well, this is, you know, we, this is our last month, uh, last Sunday of uh, January. We have just celebrated a new year. Chinese have a second chance because Chinese New Year. Uh, there's an English New Year and a Chinese New Year. So if we don't wake up at the time, I don't know what's going to happen. Right? So make full use of it, right? Um, the time, you know, when we have our Chinese New Year sessions and go visit your family members and your friends and build relationships. 
right? There are a lot of announcements you've seen up there, and uh, if you've missed it, it's all right. Go check your WhatsApp. Your leaders would have sent um, the praise info over to you. If your cell leader has not sent it to you, go and ask them, right? Hey, where's the, where's the uh, praise info? Uh, there are so many things that are happening. Amen. Praise God. Right, um, why don't you just turn around and uh, greet one another, shake one another's hands, welcome them to the house of the Lord. If you do not know them, ask them for their names. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today we are glad to have Reverend Steve Chung to be with us to deliver the Word of God and uh, also together with Reverend Lily Chung who is with us here. Reverend Lily is my classmate in Bible school and uh, she has been faithful all these years serving the Lord. Uh, they are right now at a time of transition and seeking for, to the Lord, asking God uh, the next placement of ministry. Uh, but they have been faithfully serving in River of Life Sanctuary Church over in Hatamas area, right? And uh, God is leading them to a new season of their ministry. So He has come here together, you know, to be with us, to bring the Word of the Lord. And uh, Reverend Steve Chung has been a faithful Assemblies of God minister all of these years, pastoring different churches. And right now, He says He's here to bring us the Word. Are you ready for the Word of God? Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Welcome Reverend Steve Chung. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Good morning. You know, it's such a joy to be with you here this morning, right, in this cozy little sanctuary that you have. Uh, first time here and uh, enjoy, I'm enjoying the ambience that's here and believing that God is here in His house. Amen. Praise God. You know, I understand that uh, your service is uh, pretty streamlined, okay, and uh, pretty short and uh, precise. I understand that. All right, where, where I came from, you know, uh, our service time was pretty long, okay? We stretch as long as two hours and two and a half hours, but uh, uh, here it's different. It's okay, and I understand it, you know, but... Uh, I want to so appreciate your pastor and your team, your leadership team, for uh, allowing us to be here, right? Uh, like uh, Pastor Aries have mentioned, you know, um, my wife, you know, is his classmate in Bible school, and we have, you know, they have known one another for a long, long time, all right? And uh, uh, even before you have heard of us, we have heard about your church, you know, about your pastor, okay? So uh, it's such a joy to be here with you, right, this morning. Now, without further ado, all right, if you have your Bibles, I'd like you please to turn to Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 6, all right, Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 6. I'm going to try to condense, all right, a message which I normally take about 45 minutes to half an hour, but I trust that the Lord will minister to you right through His Word this morning. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Judges uh, chapter 6, verse 2. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor, de uh, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Median so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, even as I share your word, Lord, in this short time, Lord, I pray that, God, that you would speak to your people, 
Lord, may they hear your voice. May they hear, Lord, the Holy Spirit speaking to them. Lord, I pray for your anointing, Lord, upon your servant, upon your word, and upon each one of us that hears your word today. We give you praise. We give you glory right now. Have your own way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. You know, all of us know Romans chapter 8, verse 37 and verse 38, uh, 37, 38, 39, okay? Uh, it tells us that, you know, in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, that we are more than conquerors through Christ who love us. And all of us know this verse, and, you know, we may even quote this verse, that we are more than conquerors through Christ who love us. You see, what that verse simply tells us is that God wants us to live well. Right? He wants us to live well and do great things for Him. Now, this happens, I believe, when we understand who we are in Him. That we are more than conquerors, not through our own strength, but we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us, through Christ who strengthened us. God tells us that we are VIPs. Okay, All of us know what VIP is. We are very important people. Right? We are very important people to Him. Okay? Our significance right, can be represented by these three letters, VIP. Our value, our importance, right, and our purpose right, you know, tells us, gives us you know, our importance as far as God is concerned. Okay? Our significance as far as God is concerned. Okay? And we have value, we have importance, and we have purpose in life because of our relationship with God. That's what that verse means. Romans 8.37 tells us that we are more than conquerors, all right, through Christ who love us. Now, men have been searching for significance since the fall of man, you know, since the fall in the Garden of Eden. The Bible tells us that man is made in the image of God. You and I are made in the image of God. According to scholars, right, to some scholars at least, right, being made in the image of God, they, they speculated in a way that it means that man was clothed with the glory of God. When God first made man in His image, right, they believed that they were clothed in the, with the glory of God. But because of the fall, man was clothed with shame, right? Man thus was searching for his purpose, his value, and importance. Now, I want to say this this morning. Often, man failed to understand his significance, all right, in his relationship with God. They failed to understand that their significance, their value, their importance, their purpose is found in their relationship with God. Now, because of that, that posed a hindrance to man, right, as far as having a great life, having a great service and destiny that God has for him, okay? Now, we see this in uh, Gideon's response to God's call to lead Israel, okay? Now, Judges chapter 6, we find that the Israelites were oppressed. They were oppressed and impoverished, all right, because of the enemies of God. They would labor, the Bible tells us they would labor and they would plant. But each time, you know, it was harvest time, the enemies would come. The Amalekites, the Midianites, you know, and the eastern people would come and they would ravage their crops, they would ravage the livestock. And as a result of that, they had to start all over again. They would have to labor and they would have to plant. But it happened again and again and again that the enemy would come and ravage their crops and their livestock. Now, because of that, a repeated cycle, you know, of being attacked by the enemy, the Israelites were intimidated and they were fearful. They lived in dark holes. They lived in cracks, the Bible tells us. And it was not a place that, God, it was not a place nor a lifestyle that God intended for them to be in, okay? They were doing the right things, but in the wrong places. How many of you feel that? You know, have been there. You are doing the right things, but you seem to be in the wrong places. And that's what the Israelites felt. They were oppressed, you know, they were uh, intimidated, they were fearful, and, you know, they were doing the right things, but somehow things just didn't work out and they were in the wrong place apparently. Now, one day the angel of the Lord, right, appeared to Gideon and he, the Bible tells us he was trashing wheat in the wine press. He was doing the right thing, right? 
He was harvesting. He was threshing the wheat. All right? But it was in the wrong place. It was in the wine press. Why? Because the Israelites were so afraid of the enemies. You know, they were so intimidated. They were so fearful. And they were doing things, the right things, but yet in the wrong place. And that was the scenario that the Bible painted for us, you know, about the Israelites at that time. An angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. And the angel of the Lord brought a message to Gideon. And the, and the angel said to Gideon, Gideon, God wants you to do great things. He wants to use you, right, to deliver and to restore Israel. How many of you know that when God wants to do a great thing, something great, He always looks for a man. He doesn't look for an organization. He doesn't look for a committee. But when God wants to do something great, He always looks for a man, not a perfect man, not a, a man that is all righteous, totally without sin, without fault. But when God look, wants to do something great, He looks for a man, an ordinary man who is yielded to Him who is open to his voice. And thus was the case of Gideon. The angel of the Lord came and said, Gideon, God wants to use you. But you see, Gideon was a man like any one of us. Gideon had a problem. All right, Gideon had a problem. You know what the issue was? There was something that was still not settled in his heart. He doubted the love of God. He doubted the love of God. He doubted the care of God. And as a, as a result of that, he struggled with his own significance. He struggled as, you know, uh, with how he sees himself, how people would see him. He struggled with that. Why? Because he doubted the love of God. He doubted that God cared for him. And so he wasn't sure how to look at himself. He wasn't sure how people would look at himself. And that was the issue that Gideon had when the angel of the Lord came and told him that God wanted to use him to do great things. The angel said, right, in verse 12. Now, I don't have time, actually. What I'm going to share is, runs from chapter 6 to chapter 8 of the book of Judges. But you can go back, you know, go back and refer to it. The angel of the Lord said to Gideon, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And Gideon said, but sir, if the Lord is with us, why are all these things happening to us? Where is the God of the miracles that our ancestors told us? Did not God bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The angel said, Gideon, you know, God is going to be with you. Mind you, a mighty warrior. And Gideon said, why is this all happening to us? Where is the power of God that I heard so much about? God has abandoned us, apparently. That was Gideon's reaction when the angel of God said, you are a mighty warrior. Instead of saying, amen, I receive it. But Gideon doubted. He doubted the power of God. He doubted that God was with him. All right? And he asked, where is the power of God I've heard so much about? Then the angel of God went on to say, Go in the strength that you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? And Gideon said in verse 15, But Lord, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. He began to doubt. First of all, God's love, God's power, God's presence with him. And then when God, when the angel of God says, Now go! Go, you have the power of God. You have the strength of God. Go and deliver Israel. He said, but God, my clan is the smallest in Manasseh. But, and I'm the, I'm the youngest. I'm the least in my family. Who am I? He began to doubt himself. He doubted God's love. He doubted God's care. He doubted God's presence. And then he doubted himself. You see. You see, when you doubt the love of God, when you doubt the care of God for your life, you will begin, you know, to wonder about your own significance. You will be, begin to wonder how people will look at you and you have a wrong image of yourself. The angel said in verse 16, finally, I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. In the Hebrew, all right, in the Hebrew translation, it reads this way. 
you will be like a glove in my hand and you will strike down the enemy, you know, and none of them shall be alive. The angel said, you are going to be greatly used. You see, God always sees what we can be in Him, not what we are today. Right? The angel said, Gideon, in spite of how, you know, of your doubt, in spite of, of your doubt about God's love and God's presence, in spite of, you know, the doubt you have in your heart. Gideon, you shall be a glove in my hand, in the hand of the Lord, and you shall strike the enemy. You shall have great victory. See, the angel of God was looking at what Gideon can be, right, in God, not what he was at that time. See? And this is how God looks at us. You know, the angel said, you are a great warrior. You shall do great things, right? It wasn't that Gideon at that time was strong in himself, but Gideon was strong in God. God was with him. And God see him as somebody who do great things in the kingdom of God. Not what he was at that time, but what he shall be in the name of the Lord. And this is how God looks at us today. Friends, He doesn't look at us, you know, in our weakness. He doesn't look at us, you know, in our fears, you know, in our, uh, you know, in our frailties. But God looks at us, what we can be, what can, we can do in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. And God says, you know, in the book of Revelation, I believe, says that He will give us a new name. That's right. He will give us a new name. Why a new name? A new name, right? Because that's what you are going to be, all right? That's what you are going to be. That's what God meant. Now, if you and I meet an angel, an angel spoke to us, we'll never be the same again. That's what we all say, right? You know, we will be so on fire, you know, all of a sudden, if I can see God, you know, if I can experience His presence, you know, if an angel were to appear before me, my life will be different, you know, I will be a different person, you know, I will be able to do great things for God. But here was Gideon, an angel of God appeared before him, and an angel of God gave him words, you know, powerful words, you are a great warrior, you know, you shall have great victory, you know, you shall do great things, you know, in the name of the Lord. And yet, the Bible tells us, Gideon did not believe the words of the angel. Don't you ever believe somebody, you know, you know, somebody who says, oh, I'm going to be different when I see God. If you're going to be different, you're going to be different now. All right? Not everybody who says, oh, I'm going to be, you know, when I meet God, I'm going to, be dip, going to be different. Not everybody who says that, you know, will be true to his words. Because here was Gideon, all right, and the angel of God appeared before him, you know, gave him words, you know, from heaven itself. And yet Gideon could not believe the word of God. Gideon asked for two signs. Twice he asked for signs. God, you know, if, you, if this is true, if you are speaking to me, now do this for me. He asked for two signs. And twice the angel of God obliged, you know, and gave him two signs. When we are unsure of the love of God, and we don't know who we are in God, friends, we will doubt when God speaks to us. We will doubt when God speaks to us and, you know, and He wants to do something great in our lives, we will doubt it. If you and I are not sure, you know, are not, it is not established in our hearts that God loves us, that God has a plan for our lives, if this is not established in our hearts, when God speaks to us, when God gave a prophetic word, you know, to us, and when God does a miraculous, supernatural work in our lives, we will not believe it. And that's what happened to Gideon. An angel of God supernaturally appeared before him, gave him prophetic words, gave him powerful words, and yet Gideon could not believe it. He went on to ask for two signs. And even then, you know, he wasn't sure. He wasn't sure, you know, that that was truly God speaking to him. That's why it's important for you and I to be established in the fact that God loves us, you know, that God, you know, cares for us. That's why it's important for us to know, you know, our significance in God, friends, today. Because then 
we are, when we, the Bible tells in Ephesians, when we understand the depth, the width, and the height of God's love, then we are able to un- experience the fullness of God. We are able to receive what God wants to do in our lives. The first thing God asked Gideon to do was to destroy the idols in his town. God told Gideon, Gideon, I want you, you know, to tear down the altars of Baal. And I want you to cut down, you know, the pole, the Asherah pole that is in the town erected by your father. That's the first thing that God told Gideon. After God told him, you know, that he was going to, you know, that he is with him, he's going to, you know, he's going to use him to do great things, you know, and all that. One of the very first things God told Gideon to do, cut down your idol. Cut down the idol that is right smack in the middle of your town. You know, cut down that pole, the Asherah pole. One of the things that we need to realize is that when we doubt God's love for us and we struggle with our own significance, who we are in God, that we are valuable, that we are important, that we are, that is purpose, you know, in our relationship with God. When we doubt God's love and we struggle with our significance, we bring idols into our own lives. To cover that area which we are not comfortable, to cover that area which we are insecure with, to cover that area, you know, where we ask, you know, we feel that we are so vulnerable, we bring idols. If we are not sure of God, if we are not sure of His love for us, if we are not sure of His care for us, if we are not sure that, you know, He has a plan for our lives, you know, what we do is that we will take an idol. We'll bring an idol into our lives to bring us that which is lacking in God. And that's what happened, friends. The people of Israel brought an idol. God was their God. God was supposed to be their Lord. But, you know, because they were not secure, they were, they were fear, afraid, they were intimidated, they brought an idol into their town. And this is the truth, friends. When we doubt God's love, when we doubt You know, when we are unsure of our significance is found in Him, we will find an idol to replace God, to give us that which is lacking. Psalms 115 verse 8 tells us, you know, men tend to be like the idol we make. It says, those who make idols will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. What we worship is what gives us a sense of significance and well-being. What we worship is where we get our significance, where we get that sense of well-being. We are governed by what we worship. Can I repeat that? We are governed by what we worship. If we, you know, if we worship money, if money is important, if we put, you know, extreme value on money and, you know, it's very important to us, it gives us a sense of importance. Friends, you'll be tight-fisted. You be a stingy poker, you know. I realize, you know, uh, in my life on ministry, it is not the rich that is generous. It's not always the rich. I realize that, you know, in, you know, so many times, you know, it is those who are touched by the grace of God, touched by the love of God experience, you know, the kindness of God. These are the ones, doesn't matter they are rich or poor, these are the ones that will be generous, you see. So if we worship money, you know, we will be tight-fisted. If we put importance in status and success, friends, we will be afraid of what others will say about us. If we put importance, you know, in accomplishments, friends, then we will always be threatened by failure and we will always be driven to do better and better and better. We will never be satisfied. Because what we worship, friends, we are governed by it. You see. Idols give us, you know, grips us in callousness and fear. Idols, when we have idols in our lives, you know, eventually it leads to fear. It grips us. It controls us. You see. And it results in fear. When Gideon was gathering his army to fight the enemy, you know, God had to reduce his you know, his army from 32,000, you know, to 10,000 and then to 300. You know the story. You can read that, you know, in Judges chapter 7. 
He took 32,000 you know, of His people to fight against the enemies. But God said, that's too many. He reduced, God reduced it to 10,000. And then finally, three, with 300 people, Gideon was able to defeat the enemy. Why? When you fight a, you fight a war, you want to have more people, right? Isn't it? In the natural, you know, we want to have more people. The more, you know, our soldiers are, the better it is. Right? The more tanks we have, you know, we think that the chances of winning is, you know, is greater. But here in war, God says, Gideon, you have too many people. 32,000 people, that's too many. 10,000, that's too many. They came down to 300. And with that 300, God was able to enable Gideon to get victory over the enemy. You know what is the lesson that? The lesson is that God wanted Gideon to know he loves the Israelites and they are very important people. And with him, it is enough. With God, it is enough. Amen. That's why God says 32,000 is too much, too many. 10,000 is still too many. And then with 300, Gideon was able to defeat the enemy with the strength of the Lord. See, that's what God wants us to know a lot of times, you know, that we are important to Him, right? And with Him, we are the majority. With Him, we are the majority. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. The key to victory, right, in our battles, you know, is to face our enemy head on with the Lord. Don't run away. The key to victory, all right, is to face our enemy with the Lord, not to run away. When we understand what we mean to Him and surrender ourselves to His leading, that is where the victory lies. God told Gideon, Gideon, as they reached the army of the enemy, you know, the, the camp of the enemy, the Bible tells us, God says, Gideon, go and listen Go and sneak into the camp of the enemy and listen to what they have to say. All right? And so Gideon sneaked into the enemy's tent. And at that point, he overheard their conversation. One of them said, you know, I had a dream. I had a dream of a barley loaf of bread that rolled down and hit the tent of the Midianites. And then they were talking among themselves about this dream. And they said, surely it is Gideon. Surely it is Gideon and he's going to come. He's going to roll over our camp. He's going to destroy, you know, our camp. He's going to destroy our enemy. And fear and confusion came into their lives. And the Bible tells us they fought one another. The enemies fought one another. And God gave Gideon and his army an easy victory. Sometimes you and I need to go into the enemy's camp. And we need to hear what they say about you in God. I said, sometimes you need to go into the enemy's camp and listen to what they have to say about you who are in God. Amen. I think the enemy believe what God say about you more than you do. Isn't it? God says, you're a mighty warrior. Is it? God says, you shall do great things. You shall have great victory. Uh, wait and see, you know. God says, you know, you're going to have tremendous victory. All the enemies will be destroyed. Oh, is that right? You know, sometimes we believe, the enemy believes in God, what God says more than we do ourselves. Where do we put our faith in this morning? Where do we put our faith in this morning? Don't put faith in your faith. Sometimes when you are weak, you know, when you are, you are frail, you are down, you are, you know, you are discouraged, you know, you don't feel strong. Is that not right? And, it, and you begin to doubt yourself, you know, oh, you are such a, you know, weak Christian. You don't believe in God's Word. You know, you, you are so frail. Look at you. You know, you are doubting Thomas. You know, surely God will not, you know, honor your unbelief, you know, your, your little faith. But let me say this to you. Don't put faith in your faith. Put faith in the love of God. 
God's love is perfect. Perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. Because God loves you perfectly. You know, nothing shall change that. He is faithful even though we are unfaithful. And God says, even though we don't believe, even though we feel weak, even though we feel frail, God is God. He will never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, friends. And He will stand true to you. Amen. So don't put faith in your faith. Put faith in God's love and God's care, you know, and God's faithfulness. That when you are weak and you're down, when you are, you know, you're almost out, God is there to help you. Amen. Oh, friends, this is, you know, this is the pit that many of us fall into a lot of times. When we are strong, we have faith in God. You know, we are, you know, we feel so powerful. We can do all things. But when we are weak, when we go to troubles and difficulties and pain and sorrow and suffering, we begin, you know, to doubt not only God, we begin to doubt ourselves. You know, oh, we, you know, we, don't, we have so little faith. And we are not sure God will honor us. God will take care of us. God will look upon us with pleasure. That's the lie of the devil. In spite of your faith, God loves you. God cares for you. Amen. And He will be faithful even though we are unfaithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Believe. Believe what God says. Believe in His love. You need to establish yourself. You need to anchor yourself in the love of God. That because God loves you, he, you are very important people. Everybody say, I'm important I am important. Come on, I am important. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am important. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are important in God. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to establish that in your life, right? You got to establish that, you know, in your heart. That God loves you, you know, and your significance, because God loves you, you are significant. You are invaluable, you are important, you know, you have purpose in your life. Hallelujah. I'll close with this thought. Why it's so important to settle this in your heart? You know, after the victory over the, you know, the, the enemies, the Israelites offered to make Gideon their king. They wanted to, you know, establish Gideon as their king. But Gideon said, no, I don't want to be your king, but I have a request. All I want is an earring from each Ishmaelite or each enemy that you kill. All, all I want is all the you know, golden earrings that the enemy wear. And so they said, okay. And so the Israelites collected all the golden earrings and gave it to Gideon. And you know what Gideon did? Gideon you know, melted all those golden earrings and, Gild, and Gideon made an ephod, a golden ephod and place it in the center, you know, of their town, of their city. And this is what the Bible records for us. Verse 27, right? Verse 27. I believe it's chapter 8. This is what it is recorded. Gideon made the gold into an ephod, which he placed in Ophrah, his town. All Israel prostituted themselves by worshiping it there. And it became a snare to Gideon and his family. Let me repeat that. Gideon made the gold into an ephod which he placed in Ophrah, his town. All Israel prostituted themselves by worshipping it there. And it became a snare to Gideon and his family. You know, an ephod is a garment that the priest uses when he enters into the presence of God. It is to lead people into the presence of God. And here Gideon, you know, while he seems to be very honorable and very humble, he says, I don't want to be your king. I don't want to rule for, over you. God is your ruler. He seems very humble, very noble, very honorable. But, you know, it was just half the truth. Because the next thing that he did was that he made an ephod 
and he made an ephod of gold from the earrings. And there, the Bible tells us he made the people of Israel worship that ephod. Instead of worshiping God, the people of God worship that ephod. And the Bible tells us that golden ephod became a snare to Gideon and his family. You know, let me just break it down for what it means. It means that while Gideon outwardly said, I don't want to rule over you, he wanted the honor. He wanted people to recognize him. He wanted people, you know, you know, to honor him, you know, to, to give him that respect. Not as God, but almost like God. And because of that, you know, the people began to worship that ephod. The Bible tells us, and it became a snare. Why did it become a snare to Gideon and his family? Because why? Gideon, you know, dwelled on the honor. Gideon dwelled, you know, on, on, on that respect that people gave to him. You know, it became something that caught him, that, that trapped him. Why? Because deep inside, Gideon did not deal with the issue, you know, of his significance. That his significance, you know, is in the love of God. That God, you know, is the one who loves him and cares for him. And his significance, his value, his importance, and his purpose is found in God. He did not deal with that. And while he seems to be very honorable, said, I don't want to be king, but he wanted to be next to the king. At the end of, it, of his life, he ended sadly. His life, his life ended sadly. Gideon and his family was trapped. Because why? They failed to recognize the love of God for him and his, and his, and his family. He failed to find his significance in God. He yearned after the praise of men. And that trapped him. That trapped him. I wonder what it means by being at snap. It means that that stopped him from being great, from pleasing God. See, this morning, that's why it's important. That's why it's important to settle issues of your heart early. It's important to not let that, the issues of your heart haunt you. You know, if you doubt the love of God and you're, you're, not, you know, you're not settled in your heart that God loves you and that you are very important to Him, that your significance is found in Him. If that issue is not settled, you know, it still you know, bothers you. And I say this, all right? I say this, many of us, you know, including myself, struggle with that often. But if that issue is not settled in our heart, friends, if our significance is in achievement, status, money, ministry, and so on and so forth, friends, today may I encourage you to settle it. Surrender yourself to His love. Say, God, I surrender my life. I surrender, you know, my needs to you. I surrender my ambitions to you because I know you love me and you will take care of me. You got to settle that in your heart because otherwise that issue will haunt you like it haunted Gideon. Are we pressed and in lack? Are, doing, are we doing the right things? Are we going to the motions? But somehow, you know, we are not going anywhere. Things are, you know, things are not falling into place. Friends, is the enemy causing us to, you know, live in fear and we are hiding? Hiding from what God is calling us to do? This morning, may I encourage you, surrender yourself to the love of God. God desires to reveal and touch you with His love. Surrender whatever it is that you are struggling with. Say, God, from now on, I choose to believe. I choose, you know, to believe that you love me. I choose, you know, to dwell in your love. I choose to believe that you love me, regardless of my situation. And friends, when that happens, your life will be great in God. All that God has for you, all you know, to live for Him, to serve Him, and all the great destiny that God has for you, you can be assured that you are on the right track. You may not be there, but you're on the right track. Amen. Because you know God loves you, all right? And He loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. This morning, God is good. 
He loves us very much. Let's establish this in our heart. Let's anchor our lives on this truth. Amen? Amen. Let's look to God in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Friends, if you are struggling, struggling to say amen, that God loves you and that you are important because He loves you. This morning, won't you silence that voice of doubt that voice of unbelief and say, God, I believe you. I embrace your word and from now on, regardless of my situation, I believe your word. I believe your love. I put my trust in your love. And if you're going through difficult times and you're going to, you know, Seemingly repetitious cycles. And you don't know where you're heading. You are uncertain and you are in fear. You are hiding from God and you know that God is speaking to you and you say, But God, I'm not ready. This morning, won't you? Stop trying to work things out yourself and abandon yourself to His love. The Bible tells us that those who put their trust in God will not be disappointed. They will not be ashamed. They will not be forsaken. They will not be abandoned because God loves them. Nothing shall separate you from His love. And because of that, that's why you shall be, if you're not already there, you shall be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, you have heard the Word of God. But most importantly, you have sensed the Holy Spirit whispering to you. God saying to you, He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He has drawn you with His loving kindness. And that it will be well because He will be faithful even though we don't feel so strong. And as you hear the voice of God speaking to you, this morning as we close this service you're saying to God not to me but you're saying to God God I hear your voice I hear what you're saying to me Lord I've been struggling struggling all this while on my own and I, I've forgotten that you love me and because you love me God you will work all things well you will work all things well for my good. I've forgotten your love. But this morning I've heard your voice. I've decided that I'm going to surrender myself, my life, all over to you again. I'm going to put my trust in your love, in your loving hands. If there's someone who's here like that, if that's your prayer, you'd like us to pray together before we close, just put up your head and put it down. Uh huh. God sees your heads. Yeah. Yeah, God sees your heads. Right. Anyone else? You know, you just want to surrender. Yes, you may put your hand down. You are saying to God, God, I surrender my life to you, to your love all over again. Just put up your head and put it down, and we'll pray for you as we close. Shall we all stand right now?
Father, we stand before you as your children today. We stand before you as sons and daughters today. And we stand before you just as we are. We have heard your word and Lord, we have heard your voice, dear God, that you have loved us with an everlasting love, that you have drawn us, Lord, Father, with loving kindness, with unfailing kindness. And this morning we say thank you once again, dear God, Father, for being our Father. Thank you once again for loving us just as we are. And this morning, dear God, even as we come to you just as we are, we pray that God, that you will once again infuse our hearts with your love. Fill our hearts with your love once more. Lord, grant us a fresh revelation of your love, dear God. That God, that Lord, we will put our trust in you. Lord, not in ourselves, not in our righteousness, not in our even in our faith, God. But God, that help us, Lord, I pray. Lord, to understand that you, Lord, you love us with, with an everlasting love. And that God, that we, Lord, all we need to do is put our trust in your love. This morning I pray, dear God, that God that right now infuse our hearts, Lord, pour your love into our hearts once again. And God, we ask that God that even right now that you would take our lives into your hands, dear God. Take our lives into your hands, dear God, I pray. We surrender all, Lord, we are to your hands, dear God. And we ask, dear God, and in your loving kindness, that God, that you will minister to each one of us. You know who we are, dear God. You know what we are going through. Lord, the things that we are struggling with. Lord, the things that God, that, Lord, that we are working through so hard, dear God. Lord, right now, we ask that God, that even as we surrender ourselves to your love, that you will minister to us. We believe that God, that in your love, you will grant us that breakthrough. In your love, Lord, you will provide. In your love, dear God, Lord, that you will grant us healing. In your love, dear God, we know that, God, that you will answer our prayer. In your love, God, you, we know that you're going to save our loved ones. In your love, oh God, we know that, God, that you will help us through the circumstances. Father, we surrender ourselves to you. We surrender ourselves to your love right now. We ask, dear God, let your fresh revelation of your love come upon each one of us. I pray especially for those who have lifted their hands to you. Lord, those who have indicated they have special needs, dear God. Lord, that you are speaking to them. I pray even as you have spoken to them, Lord, you will grant them the manifestation, dear God, of your words. You will grant breakthrough to these who have raised their hands. Lord, tonight, this morning, I commit, Lord, your precious ones into your loving hands. I ask for your richest blessing upon these, your people. Bless this church, I pray. Bless Praise City Church. And Lord, we are careful to give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor Harris. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I want to thank Reverend Steve Chang for bringing us the word to us. Come on, give him a big hand of appreciation. <laughs> Amen. You've heard the word this morning. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Okay. And uh, I, I pray that you will hear it loud and clear because it, I don't know how you feel about yourself. And I guess most of the time, if you are like me, we don't feel pretty good about ourselves. We are just not up to the task. We are not capable enough. This year, the, the, the problems, you know, and the struggles may be just a little bit too much that we can handle. But as has been said to us, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. I, I just want to do just one thing. It just came to my mind. Um, what I asked Wilson to come. Yeah, you just come. Yeah. So right, you, you don't need to do anything. You just come. And you come up here. I pick a small size guy. <laughs> okay. 
Look up. Ah, you see, you're handsome when you look up. You look down means not so handsome. Okay. It is just like this. Let me tell it straight to you. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Which means, sometimes we expect that the Lord is with you because you're a mighty warrior. No, wow, because you're so mighty, therefore everybody wants to get rid to Him. He says, the Lord with you because you are mighty. That's the difficult part. Okay? We don't feel like that. But what the pastor was trying to tell us, Reverend Steve Chang was trying to tell us, is this, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. He says that you are a mighty warrior because the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you that makes you right now as a mighty warrior. He did not come to you and say to join you because you are great in yourself, but because we will become great because the Lord comes to him. And just our scripture verse, the Lord replied, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Amen. We may feel small just as Gideon may feel small in his own self because the Lord is with him. He is a mighty warrior. Thank you, Wilson. Come on, give him a big hand for this young man. So you may feel small, I says, but notice this. As you walk out of this hall, the Lord is with you. And because He is with you, pull your chin up. Square your shoulders. You are a mighty warrior. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Right. And it says, oh, the Lord be with you. Um, it says, this coming Thursday will be our uh, UCP, on-site UCP. And then on Saturday, we're going to have our God First online. We're going to pray um, over Zoom. And uh, you would be given the links. And you know the links. It has not changed. Right? Uh, I think, oh, sorry, there is a change. There is a change of link, but uh, it will be posted to you and you will receive it. Right? It says that we are going to come together and we're going to pray to God because He is the one who makes us to become a mighty warrior. Can you do that? Let 2024 be a year whereby you will grow stronger in prayer. If you don't know how to pray, join us. Catch some fire on our Thursday night UCP. The Lord bless you.